Hey, before we start today's Devo, let's just worship Jesus for a bit. Just sing. Just look at his face. Drink in his love. Thank him for the day. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Praise your name, God. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We praise your cameras. Thank you for a couch to sit on. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes away all of our sins so you don't even see them. They're forgotten. Thank you for cleansing us by the washing water of your word, God. Thank you for washing our hearts so that we can see God. Thank you for washing our minds so we can be renewed in the spirit of our mind to, to see your words gush through us. Thank you for cleansing our body, soul, and spirit to be consumed by the living God. To be consumed by the living God. <laughs> we drink. <laughs> Just take your little sippy cup, dip it in the river of life, and oh, by faith, just drink in the spirit of God. <laughs> Man. Oh man, I love it. Whoever comes to him must believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And we're seeking you diligently with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our body, all of our being, and with everything within. Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I just had to start off with that. A word of praise, because praise will cleanse your atmosphere, especially if you do it from the heart daily. Oh, Jesus, we love you, man. Thank you, Lord. We're on number 12 today. I don't know why it sounded like that. It had to be exciting, I guess. Let's help the anointing. <laughs> or we could just get out of the way and let Yahweh shine through the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is way better than anything that we could conjure up in the flesh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. I feel confirmation on that one. <laughs> like a little squirt of living water through my heart. <laughs> oh. Just take your time. We have the eternal gospel living within us. <laughs> I'm not in a rush. <laughs> I just want to feel his rush flooding through my being. <laughs> Living stones. <laughs> you know, it took, a, it took a stone out of the stream to kill a Goliath and all of his blocking of dreams, you know. <laughs> Once all the weapons of our warfare come out of the, of the streams of life, the, the river of life, all your weapons come from there, the rock of Jesus Christ will destroy all the giant problems in your life. Hallelujah. Let me prepare you for the day that stretches out before you. That's exactly how Jesus talks. <laughs> One time, hold on. One time, man, I, had, I fell into a trance and in the trance I had a vision at work. And Jesus, well, it was he was preaching, but he was using me as the body. Because he'll use his body to do whatever he wants. He's like, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You know, it's like, wow. It was, but it was so anointed. It was like, uh, like those evangelists you see on the TV. In the, you know, they're just shouting, faces turning red and spit is baptized in the congregation. It was like that. Jesus was so passionate and he was using my body and using my, my voice to preach. And I was standing in front of these people and I was just preaching the gospel. And I go closer at these people. And uh, they were Chinese people. They were Taiwanese. And, and, uh, and long story short, I went there 
and I, I preached. <laughs> I learned a lot of stuff there. I went all the way, flew all, all the way down to Taiwan, and and uh, it all worked out. It was crazy. And uh, with the message that God gave me that day was just, you know, don't forget about the poor. Don't forget about the lost. It's not just to feed them sandwiches. You got to feed them the spirit. You got to bring the living word of God, the bread of His presence. It's not just feeding their bellies and kick them out, thinking you have, thinking you have rewards. Our rewards are for whatever the Holy Spirit does through our life. It was something like that. It was a rebuke. I didn't. I didn't get to talk like that with Jesus, like the Pentecostal. I don't know what <laughs> non-denominational Jesus. <laughs> it was awesome, though. It was really powerful, and I learned a lot about the word "in." He went through the word "in" throughout all the Bible, all the scriptures. Like in the beginning, in Genesis, He dwells in the secret place of the Most High. You know, I'm in the Lord, and He's in me, and Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, stuff like that. And it was anointed. It wasn't annoying. Like we were some of the people screaming at you. It was like really good. I wish I had a tape recorder. I could just press record on my brain. <laughs> just like, look at this, <laughs> man. One of these days, maybe I'll be able to preach that good, you know? Just get out of the way. Let the Lord preach through you. Anyways, let me prepare you for the day that stretches out before you. I know exactly what this day will contain, whereas you will have only vague ideas about it. Oh, man, I took so long to read it. I'm not in a hurry. But it, my Kindle thinks I am. Maybe my Kindle has like a... Rebuke the spirit of anxiety out of you, Kindle. Be free. <laughs> You're not being serious. Oh, I'm, I'm very serious about loving Jesus. Nothing more serious than the joy of the Lord in my heart and mind. Hmm. Oh, it's my strength. He's our strength. Anyways, Jesus said here, I know exactly... What this day will contain, whereas you have only vague ideas about it. You would would like to see a map showing all the twists and turns on your journey. You'd feel more prepared if you could somehow visualize what it is on the road ahead. You know, that's, that's what I used to do, man. I used to listen to this. Okay. Jesus sent me to the darkest places on earth. He sent me to church. <laughs> I said to Jesus, I'm like, God sent me to the darkest places on the earth, in the world. Like, I'll go wherever you want me to go. You know, I got tears and I'm just drunk in the gospel of his love. And then he sent me to church. <laughs> Where all the religious spirits are, the witches. Duh. I had no idea, man. So I'd show up, you know, in these, in these churches. Let's go, man. And I would prepare sermons. I have all my scriptures written out. And uh, every time I did that, it's like, I would like, hold on, God, hold on. I got, I got three more scriptures here. And then I would talk about the scripture. And it was dry, boring, and religious. I don't prepare my sermons. Or, you know, usually when you see me, like on my, my videos, I usually, here's the secret of my powers. <laughs> I just worship Jesus. I get blasted out of my face. I just fall so in love with him. And then I just, I turn on my camera to see if what's going to come out of my mouth. I don't know. So I just press record. And then I just open my mouth and just, you know, see what will happen. Because it's written in the Gospels that, you know, didn't he say to his disciples, don't worry about what you're going to say. So it'll be your heavenly father speaking through you, you know, to those who want to crucify you, which is usually people on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> in the comment section, I usually just delete all the comments because, uh, man, I don't, I don't really, it doesn't prove anything. I'm not here to, to try to debate anybody. I'm just here to just be with Jesus. And if you want to, it's a get to, you don't have to, you don't have to go along for this glory ride on his, in his glory sleigh through the heavens, slaying demons. <laughs> yeah. You could be earthbound, but I like soaring through the heavens with Jesus and I don't prepare the sermons. Unless he gives me revelation, then I'll just like, it's prepared in my heart. And then, you know, I might write something down, but it's very rarely because I find that it's just, I just if I could just open my heart and let him speak through my mouth, and there's going to be some glory on it. Or I just might get in the way and it's just going to be boring and religious. <laughs> so it's just like a trust thing. How do you spell faith? T-R-U-S-T. <laughs> Anyways, 
Oh man, these videos get long so fast. Okay. Yeah, that's what I, remind, I was reminded of that, all the twists and the turns. You like to see a map showing all the twists and turns of your journey, you'd feel more prepared if you could somehow visualize what is on the road ahead. However, there is a better way to be prepared for whatever you will encounter today. Spend quality time with me. That's what I usually do before I open my mouth. I'll get blasted in worship. The most quality time you'll ever spend with God is in a state of adoration, awe and wonder in His presence as you just look at Him. And I find worship is like the wings that just lift me off of the world and into where I'm actually with Him in heavenly places and I just look at Him. And the more I look at Him, the more the veils just, just burn off of my eyeballs. The, burn, the, the veils burn off of my heart so I can see more of Him. Realms that I've never seen in Him before. Oh, Jesus. Man, I wrote on my Facebook uh, yesterday. It's like when Jesus said, I am the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. You know, we think about earthly time. The one who was, yeah, he was in the Old Testament. The one who is, he is right now. The one who is to come, you know. But that's there's so much more to that statement. When God said, it's not, it was not just for us on earth, it's for those in heaven. The one who was. He was before time. He was in dimensions that we don't even know exist, that time doesn't even exist there. He was there. The one who is now here in multi-dimensions on the earth, in the heavens, the heaven of heavens, and the one who is still coming. He's the one who is to come. It's like you can get a glimpse of God. He's manifesting all those things simultaneously. The one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. Just these realms of God. His presence, His kindness, His love, His mercy, His power, all at once. When you see God, you see a multi-dimensional, uh, just facet of Him. When He appeared to me one time, I looked in His eyes and what I saw, His eyes were like blue eternity oceans of love that go through you, that sees everything in you. He sees everything and everything He sees, He sees through the motive of love. So you feel totally secure, totally at peace. Okay, I'm taking too long. Spend quality time with me. That means worship Jesus. I will not show you what is on the road ahead, but I will thoroughly equip you for the journey. What's our equipment? Put on the full armor of God. That doesn't mean just like, I put on the helmet of salvation, I put on the breast, no, it's like, put on God. Put the armor of, who is he? God. Put God on. Be clothed in Christ. Put on the armor of His light. Put on His presence. Wear His glory through the darkness and just cast down devils wherever you go. Put on the armor of God. <laughs> Spend quality time with me. You will, I will not show you what is on the road ahead, but I will thoroughly equip you for the journey. My living presence is your companion each step of the way. Stay in continual Communication with me, whispering my name whenever you need to rede re redirect your thoughts. Thus you can walk through this day with your focus on me. My abiding presence is the best roadmap available. Amen. Exodus 33:14. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. John 15, 4-7. Oh, I love this Bible. I mean, I love this scripture right here. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. That means in, intimacy, face to face, heart to heart, spirit to spirit. He is like a branch that is, wait. Uh, if anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, my words, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it'll be given to you. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what the Bible says. That's what the truth of Jesus said. Did you see what that just said? If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. Thus saith the Lord Jesus Christ. 
but you got to remain in that glory. Remember Moses smote the rock? The first time revealed that the living waters would come through the smitten rock of Christ. And then he smote the rock the second time, but God told him to speak to the rock because we we're the, the living waters got after, yeah, you realize Jesus Christ has been crucified for us, but those living waters come through communication, communion with Jesus Christ. Those living waters will gush out of you the more you spend time, quality time with him. But Moses screwed up, didn't he? He smote the rock and what happened? The water still gushed out, but he couldn't enter the promised land. That's amazing. Still operating in the authority and power that God gave him, but it cost him. Anyways, I'll see you guys in uh, the next one. <laughs>